disproportionately, Missouri is going to lose a congressional seat. So we're going to go down from nine to eight. And just wanted to you know, kind of call everybody together. This is a little more formal than perhaps we wanted, but just to talk a little bit about what our process is going to be and what this means and what it doesn't mean. Um, you know, I think driving here from St. Louis this morning, just arriving here, here on the radio, all kinds of speculation on what's going to happen and what's not going to happen and who's out and who's in. And I just wanted to, to make a pretty clear statement that all that is at this point is speculation. Okay, we received our apportionment number this morning. What we don't know is where the people are in the state. Okay, I think we have some ideas or concepts in terms of where the population shifts may or may not be, but there have been absolutely no determinations made. There have been, you know, there's been no maps drawn, and you know, this committee still has a lot of work to do in front of us. Uh, one thing when we're going through this process, and the speaker uh, Tilly made very clear to me that he wants this process to be open and transparent to where we actively engage. Uh, the members, all members of our congressional delegation, as well as the public and getting good feedback. And yesterday he appointed a, a broad, diverse uh, redistricting committee of members across the state uh, and, and a mix of frankly, you know, existing members and freshmen. We have a few freshmen on this too, because this is an important issue which will affect the state for a long time. So, you know, as we go through the next couple weeks and months, there are gonna be a lot of nervous people and nervous people tend to speculate, and that's all it is at this point. So, you know, what we're going to do, our Representative Flanagan, uh, me, and other members of the committee, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to sit down with Speaker Tilly, and we're going to develop a game plan on how we deal with this information that we got today, and how we put together an organized um, plan to draw a new map which fairly and adequately represents all Missourians. Okay, that's what we intend to do is to draw a fair map and um, you know, we'll, keep, we'll keep you and the public uh, you know, apprised of our progress in that regard as we go through the next couple of months. So, I mean, with that, if there's anything on anybody's mind, I'm happy to take well, questions. Can you walk us through the process? Is this handled like any other bill and ultimately subject to the governor's signature or is there a different process? That's correct. <clears throat> yeah, redistricting in this state, this is congressional redistricting, okay? Uh, what we're talking about here today is handled as a bill, okay? So it's a, just like any other bill, whether it's an appropriations bill or on some general law, it has to, you know, make it through a House committee and pass the House and go to the Senate, pass it through a Senate committee and get passed by the Senate, then the two sides have to reconcile the bill into the exact language to be presented to the governor for a signature. And it can originate in either how. It can either originate in the House or the Senate. So we haven't, uh, my guess would be it'll originate in the House because I think we're a little further along in our organizational process than the Senate is at this point. But it, it, could, it could happen either way. And then the governor has to sign it. And if he signs the bill, it becomes law. Uh, if he vetoes the bill, we would have to override his veto just as any other bill, um, which require, I think, 109 House members and the Senate is veto proof, assuming you keep everybody together over there. So, um, so if we don't override the veto, uh, it would go to the courts who would draw the map, which has happened in the past. Wait, the courts. Courts. Supreme Court. Supreme Court. There, there's a panel selected by the Supreme Court. So it's a state court panel correct. that doesn't go to the federal court. That's correct. When do you anticipate getting the numbers you can actually work with? Well, I, you know, I'm not going to commit, I mean, my instructions from the speaker are to try to get this done as quickly as we can do and do a good job. So the public has plenty of time to digest the information and comment on it. Um, <clears throat> you know, we expect that we'll get census information, more complete census track information uh, sometime in late January to early February. But that being said, you know, our staff over the past couple of weeks has been working closely with OA to pull together background information that we know is out there in terms of, you know, voting patterns, population, voting registrations, that type of stuff. So we can at least start looking at and preparing some preliminary game plans on how we're going to handle it once we get the complete information. I understand you don't have the numbers yet, but as a representative from St. Louis County, do you feel it's important to 
St. Louis still have three congressional districts representing that region? Yeah, well, I, I'm not going to make a, a value judgment as a particular area has to have this many or this many congressmen. I mean, our duty is to write a map that fairly and adequately represents all Missourians. Now, you know, rumor has it that, you know, the city of St. Louis, for example, you know, has lost population and probably anecdotally, I think most of us would probably agree with that, but that doesn't mean what constitutes, you know, the greater metropolitan area that they've necessarily lost population as a whole. So, you know, we're just not going to get into speculating as to, you know, this area has to keep two or this area has to have three. Um, you know, we're just going to draw a map based upon where the numbers are, where the communities of interest are. I mean, you know, that's something I think, you know, we will, to get back to your question, that we'll start working on before the actual numbers come in is having hearings to, you know, to solicit comments on the existing map because the bill I'm going to file, you know, will be a bill that gets filed in the short term. Okay, and it's, it's going to probably just be a shell bill that attaches the existing map because our work is based upon the existing map and making changes to that based upon the apportionment and the changes in the census that we have. So, you know, so we can start taking comments in the shorter term in terms of issues people have with the existing map and communities of interest and those sorts of issues that we have to use to build the map. So we'll start some. Well, I mean, every bill I write, <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I think we can say this fairly in the House. I think every bill we pass, we want to be able to override a governor's veto. And so, you know, as far as who's going to file a lawsuit over what issue, you know, that's pretty impossible to try to determine at this point. I'm going to tell you, I think we're going to try to write a bill and get it out of this body that complies with all the legal standards of writing fair and adequate districts and, and you know there, there may be a lawsuit but that's after the fact of whether we find out whether the governor signs it or vetoes it 